Well, the academic research in writing is, is uh, distinct, although distinct from but related to the, to the judging. So, so my academic work continues to be um, primarily focused on economic perspective on issues of law, primarily, but related issues of public policy. Because I've written about aging and about uh, sexuality. And these are topics where I think there is a neglected economic angle, but I, I'm, I'm eclectic and I have brought to bear sociology and philosophy and other history and so on, other areas. Um, so so that's, that's the academic. But as far as being a judge is concerned, um, we don't choose our cases, so just take them as they come. Um, and I've been you know, where I've seen um, an opportunity to use economics in judging. I've certainly taken that opportunity. But um, more important really than that, my dissatisfaction with this moralistic, traditional moralistic vocabulary of law continues. And um, I'm disturbed by the degree to which the lawyers arguing cases to us uh, present them in terms of this traditional vocabulary without uh, focusing us on, uh, on the facts, on practical considerations, including economic, but not limited to it. Well, a pragmatist is someone who thinks that <clears throat> The consequences of a proposed course of action are the critical factor in deciding whether you want to follow that course. And in a in a in a judicial case, there are always you know two sides, plaintiff and defendant. One is going to win. Each is advocating a course of action, which will have consequences, good or bad. And I'd like to get the lawyers to focus, and I like, in my own uh, uh, response to a case, to focus on what those consequences uh, are likely to be. Well, a lot of the time it's just intuitive. We're not given enough facts to make a, you know, a, a, uh, rigorous cost-benefit analysis, but um, but often um, one feels at least a confidence in one's intuition that if the parties that if you can figure out concretely what will happen um, if one side or the other if one position or the other becomes the rule of law to govern future cases you have one has confidence in that outcome then. Um, one feels one is making a pragmatically sound uh, uh, decision. Well, judges don't look back, actually. <laughs> um, uh, I, any judge who's realistic will realize that a significant percentage of the uh, Votes he's made in cases are either uh, indeterminate as to whether they're right or wrong, or they're wrong. So I've um, I've I've sat in more than uh, in approximately six thousand appeals in my twenty six years as a judge. Now I know there's a percentage of those cases which uh, which I which I which I voted incorrectly, but I'm. I have no inclination to look back, try to figure out which the, which they were. Now, sometimes, um, in a new case, people parties will advocate a position that is contrary to one I took in a previous case. I'm happy to re-examine my earlier position, but I don't sort of independently, in the absence of challenge look back and try to figure out what's right or wrong. The other thing is, so I've, I've written, so I say I've heard more than 6,000 cases. I've written 
almost 2,500 opinions, I've forgotten most of them, right? I don't, I don't carry 2,500 opinions in my head. Uh, but if I'm reminded about a case, as I say, I'm happy to, to re-examine my position.